This is a short video about infant colic, sometimes called three-month colic. I can speak with some authority on this because one of my children had it and one of the most helpful things was my then boss at the hospital said, well Terence, um, it's not just three months, it can be much longer. And whilst that sounds bad news, actually it was reassuring to, to be realistic that it wouldn't suddenly stop at 12 weeks. So what is colic? Well, it's a severe, crying, distressed child, usually starts not in the first days after birth, but a few weeks, and mostly in the evenings. Colic is a term we use in, in medicine, abdominal colic from pain in the guts, renal colic from the kidneys. It describes an idea of an of a, of a organ contracting rhythmically, and each contraction causes severe pain. But actually, nobody's ever proven that what's called infant colic in children is indeed due to that kind of thing happening. But the name has stuck. Um, maybe because children during an episode of colic often draw their knees up, they go red in the face, they seem to be straining, and sometimes they're relieved by passing wind or burping or doing a poo or having a feed. And maybe that's led people to believe that it is something to do with the guts. But to be honest, there's really no proof of that. In addition, and my own experience is it is often relieved by things that are completely unrelated to the guts. So picking a child up, rocking them, soothing them, classically putting them in a car seat and driving them around in a car, absolutely, in my experience, guaranteed to stop a child crying, but as soon as you stop and put the handbrake on, they start it again. And that idea of regular rhythmic movements also is why some people have found putting the crib on top of a, a, a washing machine, tumbler dryer while it's going round, uh, is effective. I wouldn't recommend that. It's actually quite dangerous because the crib might vibrate off the top and fall on the ground. But I did find that putting the vacuum cleaner on uh, also worked, that kind of background rhythmic noise. So, um, it's even alleged, I don't know whether this is true, I think somebody developed a, a vibrating device that was based on the kind of rhythm of a Volvo car engine that was, was the most effective. Whether that's true or not, I'm not sure. There's some evidence published in the British Medical Journal a long time ago that suggested that it's actually an interaction between the child and a, a parent, that, that colic is more likely in parents who are stressed, anxious or depressed. I think this is a bit chicken and egg, to be frank. I found it so distressing and so disruptive at late at, in the evening or at night and driving out in the car to stop it that it would cause any parent to become stressed, anxious or depressed. So I don't know which comes first. What can you do about it? Well, provided illness has been excluded, we've got to be sure the child's not crying and inconsolable because they've got illness. And the commonest illnesses would be uh, allergy to cow's milk introduced perhaps too soon um, or in, in formula milk so in, but it happens in breastfed babies too for sure uh, also something called gastroesophageal reflux which means acid coming back up from the stomach and causing a burning sensation in the gullet the food pipe or the back of the throat but if your child's been examined by a health visitor, midwife, general practitioner, and is growing normally, and you're reassured that it's not some underlying illness, then first of all, reassurance. Colic does not lead to any harm, no long-term consequences. Children do eventually grow out of it with no long-lasting effects. And then what can you do as a parent? Well, I never say to parents, don't worry about any condition because Parents do worry about their children, rightly so, and a parent who isn't worried about a screaming, inconsolable child is probably, I say, I'd be worried about the parents. So, but what I do say to them is you've got to remain calm. Don't let this wind you up. Easier said than done, but I'm speaking from personal experience. And surely the idea of reassurance that there's no disease, your child will get better, should allow you to remain calm. You can try one of the tricks I've mentioned above, driving in the car, don't put the crib on top of a washing machine, but you can try the vacuum cleaner. Uh, but they're wearing and time consuming and not easy to do late at night. So the final advice that really helped me was when our health visitor said, look, you need permission. If your baby's been fed, is dry and clean and is warm, you just need permission eventually to have some time out 
So you put the child and the crib in a room, you turn the lights out, you walk away, put some music on to keep the crying out of your mind. If necessary, close the door and you walk away for a time you allow yourself 10, 15 minutes, whatever, and you can go back then and check on the infant, but you've got to be allowed for time out. It will stop eventually. That's the main message, but it is common. I hope this has been helpful. Take care. Bye.